So, uh, what can you see? So this is this is what happens when you start your ACL avulsions. There's just red everywhere. And visualization is the key in ACL. And so we'll spend just one minute on how you'll increase or better your visualization. So what we need to do is first, put your scope in, give a good thorough wash. The best way to do is, is let a lot of fluid go in and let it have a tamponade effect. So as soon as the whole thing swells up, the bleeding stops and you keep on flushing it till the time the return fluid is also clear. So this is the first thing you need to do. If you do this for five minutes, this will save your whole surgery. Is it stuck on this? No. <laughs> ah, I gave a wash, Navid. Thank you very much. I didn't break anything. So uh, as we know, there are a lot of classification in avulsions. I'm not going to go into these details, but you all know about it. The advantages are humongous, but certain things that you definitely need to know, that it is technically demanding. There are visibility issues and there is compartment syndrome. So one, uh, another small trick, if your uh, surgeries are done 10 days post-op, the chances of compartment syndrome significantly reduced. So try to do them at a, roughly around 10 days, it'll be good. Your fixation points, this is the standard basic ACL avulsion. I'm not going to go into a lot of different tips. This is a standard one. What you're doing is you're passing the loop around the ACL. Your cr I, cr I crisscross it, so this gives a three-point fixation. Let's look at this case example. That's a standard ACL avulsion, the one which we can do. And here's what we are doing. We are going in, giving a thorough lavage. That's the ACL, which is intact. So again, what I do is I use the central portal uh, as the visualization portal. The anteromedial and the anterolateral portals are, are my uh, instrumentation portals. I use the suture shuttle. I go deep at the base of the ACL, so that gives me a good leverage. I use a fiber tape or a taping suture tape rather than uh, uh, simple threads because that gives a good fixation with a single point as well. And of course, there are two tunnels which I drill. Sorry. So as you can see, that's the articular defect. That's the ACL. Of course, you clear the crater. So this is like our significant orthopedic surgeon surgery. So we are doing our fracture fixation. We clear the hematoma. We clear the fracture. And there I am passing the suture retriever. I use an ethy bond and shuttle my fiber wire. So you can play with the portals. You can sometimes keep the central portal as an instrumentation portal. Here I think I have used the central portal as an instrumentation portal. I have used the fiber tape. Uh, these jigs are very good because they give you the exact rate where you need to keep your uh, tunnels. That's one of the tunnels. As uh, uh, Navid pointed out, you use a pseudo cannula technique to prevent any soft tissue impingement. And that's the crisscross. And as you pull it down, the ACL retentions. Another thing, don't be very, very uh, fussy about uh, anatomical reduction of the fragment. But yeah, you should not have like a beaking anterior because that will give you an FFD. But otherwise, more you should be focused on um, uh, restoration of the ACL tension. And there, as you can see, there will be a very good uh, compression, articular compression, once you finish the surgery. And that's the post-op thing. As I said, uh, a fiber tape is a much better alternative for you. And I think all of us can try that. Of course, sometimes you have these very interesting ones where you have an associated lateral meniscal root. And there again, the same protocol is used. So there you can see. So that's the ACL. Yeah. And uh, of course, sometimes you have to cut the intermeniscal ligament. There are some studies which say that hampers uh, the stability, but I found it that you need it sometimes, especially when you have these kind of, you know, doubles. So that's the anterior horn root, and the other one was the meniscus, uh, the ACL. I've passed an ethy bond through the root and I've passed one uh, fiber tape through the ACL. I crisscrossed it, passed two tunnels, pressed it down, and here I've used an endo button to tie the whole thing down. So there you can see the tension comes, even a lot of times the reduction comes very well. 
and that's the endo button on which it has been tied on the anteromedial aspect. That's the result. Let's not waste time in it. And yeah. Okay, sometimes you get these very challenging ACL avulsions. So this is a boy who had an ACL avulsion since last three years. And uh, he had a non-union fragment. Now since this boy is very young, he's like, I think, six, seven years. Of course, there are a lot of options that you can do. There is contracture of the ACL. There's hypertrophied fragment. So this is something that you should do once you master all the techniques. And here, again, as an orthopedic surgeon, you're following the principles of non-union. So you're removing all the fiber, uh, fibrous tissue. You're freshening the edges. You're using your rasp. So here you can see I'm using the shaver. I'm freshening the fracture beds. In fact, I also burred the, the, the fragment. And since this was a very small boy, I used only the, uh, not the 4.5 drill, but your conventional 2.4 guide wire. So I've used just the ultra braid. I've not used a tape in this. And to cut the long story short, I, I fixed it. So that was the immediate post-op. And that is how the, the patient went on to have reasonable union. That was his follow-up. And uh, that's the boy playing in my hospital where my staff got a CCTV footage. And uh, a pretty reasonably happy boy and parents. Of course, there are non-unions as well. You will see a lot of these. Uh, ACL non-unions is a different ball game altogether. So you remove and do your conventional ACL. So same thing, these are always be hypertrophied. So in this, don't bother about fixing this. Because this uh, is an ad adult patient and uh, uh, she has instability and locking because of this large fragment. And as you can see, the ACL is totally thinned out. And then we did an ACL reconstruction. So the post-op. So that's what I was talking about. You know, you should have see to it that if you have these kind of, if you, if you have those kind of patients, there, then you should be more worried of the anatomical reduction. So these are the cases where anatomical reduction happen. This is my own case, and I had a little bit of elevation. I just thought I should share this with y'all. Uh, this patient, I was not very happy with the X-ray. He had union, but he had a little bit of beaking. And in those cases, then you can add an anterior stretch as well but he had a reasonable function. Uh, last, sometimes you get these kind of cases. This is if you want to save this, I mean, anyone wants to save this, why we should do ACL uh, avulsions arthroscopically, this is the case. So this uh, person came to me uh, with significant anterior pain. He had an open ACL fixation done by a uh, surgeon followed by implant removal. And he had severe uh, restricted flexion and severe pain. So just look at the amount of scarring that he had. Uh, you have seen um, uh, everyone, uh, especially suppressor showing us so easily the scope goes into the suprapatellar pouch. But here I had to struggle like, um, it was my, in fact, my first ACL, something like that. And there you can see, you know, the amount of scarring that ha happens. So look at the amount of scarring that I had to remove for this patient. And uh, once we removed it, uh, we, we did an ACL reconstruction for him. So again, I won't bore you with a lot of big videos, but just I just wanted to tell you that uh, type 1 fractures, there is still role of conservative management. Even though we are talking about surgery, we are talking about ACL avulsion surgeries, but there is role. Uh, I treat type 1 ACL still with a plaster. I use it in full extension, and it should be above knee, not a uh, cylindrical cast. So give that, take the patient, repeat x-rays at three weeks, see to it that there's no beaking, and the patients will do well. All others can be managed arthroscopically. You need to have good uh, visualization, of course, and uh, good skills of uh, suture shuttling. And of course, the uh, benefits of arthroscopy outweigh open. Thank you.